Hello, and welcome to Elevator Pitch Series for the Radiographer. I am Michael, and this is the fifth video in the series on radiographic imaging. In this video, we'll be looking at some usually undesired properties a radiograph can have, distortion and artifacts. We'll be finding out what distortion is and some causes of distortion. We'll also be learning about artifacts and some types of artifacts. Let us start out with a little scenario. Imagine there is a governor of a certain state, Governor X. And towards the end of one of his press conferences, he made a very interesting statement. Life would be great if every citizen got free food every day. Now this is quite an interesting thought. Who doesn't like free food? But, you would agree with me that it was just a thought, the governor simply thinking out loud. Now, what if the very next day, the headlines read. Governor X says all citizens are to receive a daily supply of free food very soon. While this might sound nice, it is not true of what our friend, the governor, said. It is a misrepresentation of the truth. It is a distortion. Radiographic distortion is a misrepresentation of the size and or shape of an anatomy that is being radiographed. This implies that there are two types of radiographic distortion, size distortion and shape distortion. Under size distortion, we commonly have magnification. While under shape distortion, we either have elongation or foreshortening. Let us look at size distortion, magnification. It occurs due to two major reasons. An increase in the object image distance. And a decrease in the source image distance or source object distance. We learned a lot about two out of three of these terms in the previous video. In that video, we also pointed out how moving the anatomy away from the image receptor will give the X-ray beam more room to diverge further, producing a magnified and fairly unsharp image. We also pointed out that, if we move the tube away from the image receptor, that is, increase the SID, compensation for the increased OID is made, and magnification is prevented. Take note that, when increasing the SID to compensate for an increased OID, for every 1 inch of OID that was added, a 7 inch increase in SID is needed to prevent magnification. To illustrate further, let us try this example out. When an anatomy is in contact with the image receptor, an SID of 40 inches is used to produce a relatively distortion-free image. If the anatomy is moved 3 inches away from the image receptor, what SID should be used to prevent a distortion? We have stated that for every 1 inch of OID added, 7 inches of SID increase is needed. In this case, 3 inches of OID was added, which means 21 inches of SID increase is needed. The original SID was 40 inches, thus, 21 inches should be added to the old SID of 40 inches, for a compensation to occur. This brings our new SID that would provide a distortion-free image to 61 inches. We can also estimate the amount of magnification that would occur when the OID is increased and no compensation is made. Do you remember this formula from high school physics? Magnification equals image size divided by object size. We'll also be making use of a new but related formula, magnification equals source image distance divided by source object distance. Let us practice this with an example. A 44-inch SID is used to radiograph an anatomy that is 5 inches in width. If the object lies 6 inches from the image receptor, what will be the width of the image? From the question, we can establish that the SID is 44 inches. Remember when we said in the last video that source object distance, SOD, is a derivative of the source image distance, SID. Here's what we mean. The source object distance is the distance between the X-ray tube and the anatomy. Remember that the source image distance is the distance between the X-ray tube and the image receptor. And, the object image distance is the distance between the anatomy and the image receptor. If you factor these together, you would observe that the source object distance is the source image distance minus the object image distance. If you're still not sure how this is so, go over the last 30 seconds of this video again, as it might be a little bit tricky at first. Now, in this case our SID is 44, and our OID is 6. This means that our SOD is 44 minus 6, 38 inches. The X-ray tube is 38 inches away from the anatomy. Now that we know both our source object distance and source image distance, we have everything we need to calculate the magnification. Using the formula on the upper right-hand side of your screen, magnification equals SID, divided by SOD, 44, divided by 38. This gives us 1.16. What this means is that, the image produced under these conditions would be 1.16 times larger than the anatomy. Since we know the anatomy or object size from the question, and we have been able to calculate the magnification, we can now use the high school physics formula to get the size of the image. 
By making image size the subject of the formula, we get image size equal magnification times object size. This is 1.16 times 5, which gives us a final answer of 5.8 inches. What all this means is that, when an anatomical part that is 5 inches wide is placed 6 inches away from the receptor, and an SID of 44 inches is used, the image produced will not be 5 inches wide like the anatomy. It will be magnified. It will be 5.8 inches wide. That takes us to shape distortion. In size distortion, the image is larger than it normally is, but, it normally still has the same shape as the object. In shape distortion, structures within the radiograft anatomy have a misrepresented shape. Some of them appear stretched and long, an effect known as elongation. Others appear like they were pulled back in space and short, an effect known as foreshortening. In a normal situation, the anatomy is parallel to the image receptor. And the X-ray tube is perpendicular to both of them. This alignment prevents shape distortion of any kind and allows the image to completely represent the anatomy in terms of shape. Any change in this alignment between the two, anatomy and image receptor, would cause shape distortion. This change in alignment can occur when the tube is tilted such that it is no longer perpendicular to the anatomy and image receptor. It can also occur when the anatomy is not lying parallel to the image receptor. Now that we have gone over radiographic distortion, let us look at what radiographic artifacts are. An artifact is an unwanted mark or blemish on a radiographic image. It is usually due to improper handling of the film or used of damaged radiographic accessories. The list on radiographic artifacts is by no means exhaustive, there are so many types of artifacts that can occur in radiography. Let us look at a few of them. First is the pressure artifact. If you look closely at this radiograph, you would observe fingernail-like marks on it. These are not structures on the anatomy that was radiographed. Rather, they are due to pressure of the fingernails of whoever handled the film during processing. These types of artifacts are also known as crimp marks. On this radiograph, you would observe some spider or tree-like marks. This is due to the buildup of static electricity on the film. This buildup occurs when a radiographic film is slid into the cassette. It also occurs in areas of low humidity and when the radiographer wears a clothing material that encourages the buildup of static electricity. A good example of this being silk. Other types of artifacts include screen artifacts, chemical processing artifacts and grid cutoff artifacts. Remember, it is very important to prevent having artifacts on a radiograph as they severely degrade the radiographic image quality. In this video, we discussed how distortion causes structures to be misrepresented on a radiograph. Most of the time, this is bad and unwanted. However, there are times when distortion can be useful and is caused on purpose. Let us conclude this video by highlighting some useful applications of distortion. First, size distortion, also known as magnification, is useful in certain procedures like mammography to obtain magnified views of the anatomy. Sometimes in mammography, the lesions are very tiny. To get more information out of the procedure, the breast tissue is kept at a distance from the image receptor, this causes the image to be magnified, and the tiny lesions are now bigger and easier to diagnose. Also, shape distortion is achieved in the many angulation views that are used in radiography. By cranially or caudally angling the tube such that it is no longer perpendicular to the anatomy and image receptor, shape distortion occurs. This can help to displace superimposing structures that we are not interested in. One example of this is in the posterior-anterior image of the skull, where the tube is angulated downwards to displace the petrous ridge, which we have no interest in, from the orbit. That concludes this video on distortion and artifacts. We look forward to your questions and comments in the comments section or via email. If you love this video and would want more content, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Until next time, do enjoy the learning process and take care.